Okay, so I'm doing this again and I have no idea if I am live. I've got to make sure we're not private because when we were private last time, that was not fun. And it looks like we are live. Okay, hi everybody. It's a little bit later today and um, I need to sort this out. I never did the editing on the last video. I feel like I'm mumbling to myself because I haven't warned anybody what time we're doing this. Um, and let me see if I can see this. Um, live now. Oh, we're using an old picture. That's why I can't see. Right. Let me see if I can see that on the screen because then that, that means I can see people who have joined in and we can see if anybody's joining me for chat. It's Lorenzo and Terry. Terry, you're with us today. That's nice to see you. Let me put this on mute so I can't hear myself. Janet, Suzanne, Louisa, hi. You guys are awesome. How do I turn this phone I need a techie. Who's, who's good at tech? Who's good at tech? Right. I'm not hearing myself. Right. I've got my chair. So... You're all here for the giveaway, or maybe you're here for other things as well. Who's here? Sue, Sarah, hello. I need to remember to look at the camera. Okay, so last week we, we decided to do a giveaway. I f um, and I feel like we're coming back strong. I've got my camera set up as well. So I did, um, uh, Rashni, hi. Um, last week, do you know, I planned what I was gonna do. And I've forgotten what I'm doing. <laughs> this is the usual me. So last week I was going to do lots of sewing. Well, last week I tidied up my room. So I had all this space, which is fantastic. So instead of taking the opportunity and doing some sewing like you should, um, as usual, I have machines in that needed to be serviced. So they got serviced. And then I get distracted. I think, oh, that's really cool. And then ended up um taking my machine apart which is why i made that video and lorenzo i have got the so10l video coming up soon so don't worry that will be coming up soon um i'll take it apart and put it back together to show you how to take care of your machines clean them fully um and then instead of sewing this week i've been shopping for more fabric and i promised myself i am going to sew I promised the rest of the family I'm going to sew because those guys are the ones that have to put up with me. Um, I'm going to put this light on because I've just realised it's off. I don't think it's going to make a difference, but we'll see. I just feel so disorganised and it's chaotic. Is this on? Let's see. Let me see. I think this should be on. It's not on because I've not got it connected. Right. Um, giveaway. You're all here for the giveaway. Who's watching? Let's have a look. We've got Louisa, we've got Lorenzo, we've got Sue, Sarah, Rashni, Janet, Jeanette, and uh, Challenge bro Bros. Bro? Challenge Bros. Sorry, and Carol. Hello. Hello. It's so nice to see you. Um, and Emma. Oh, do you know what? I'm going to put my glasses back on. <laughs> Um, Emma from Gospel. Now the thing is, lots of you commented for the giveaway last week and that's really good and a few of you mentioned the glasses thing which is fantastic and I just realised um, I may have a list of the names that um, I didn't select them, they were selected for me and um, so it's out of my hands but I wanted to use uh, today's um, Jen I will do. Um, hi Shaz. Um, I wanted to use the opportunity to just go through a needle plates because um, <laughs> I claim to be good at using my overlocker. Actually, I'm not very good at using my overlocker. And what I did was damage the plate. And I hadn't even realised I did that. Let me see if I can bring you back closer. So I damaged the needle plates. And this needle here broke. And I hadn't even realised it was broken. So what I did today, what I've been doing this morning, is fixing the needle plate. And you can see there, can you? Um, I haven't tried it, so I don't know if it's fixed. I don't know if it's fixed properly. 
Um, but I'm going to put that out on video because this plate is £36 to replace. The machine cost me 120 guys, you tell me, because I can't remember. Um, I think it was £120. If I'm going to replace this needle plate, it's costing me £36. That's ridiculous, isn't it? Um, not doing percentage wise. I know I used to, uh, I was a math teacher. Um, but my brain doesn't work in that way anymore. So, what percentage is that, guys? Um, no prizes for the, the first one to get the answer right. Um, Val from South Africa, uh, South Africa, welcome. You have experience making cuddly toys. I've made a few. Um, I made a tiger the most recently. Um, a big cuddly tiger cushion. Um, it's, it was made for children, but my child is 18. Hmm. And then made one for his girlfriend. And you can see that in one of my overlocker videos. It was all entirely done on the overlocker, just a couple of bits that needed to be done um, on the sewing machine. And Debbie from the US is here indiana no less um yes cuddly toys is that because you want to make some nash is that right nash nish 25 percent good good sums so 25 percent of the cost is just this needle plate and i just thought that's ridiculous i don't want to do that so i've been sat here this afternoon working out how i can fix this properly so that you guys can fix yours properly. And I don't want to, um, you know, not fix it, give you a hack to save you money, and then it's not a good hack. So I've been tinkering, tinkering around with various things. And um, at the end of the day, it's just a piece of metal, and I'll show you um, if I've not lost it, because it was um, a tiny little thing, let me see. It's a tiny little thing. And I actually measured it, it's 14 millimetres long. So I've got my pliers, you're gonna need, you're gonna need your pliers, you're going to need, um, <laughs> I, I made this vice. I don't make the lights very good. I need a light, I need a light. Ooh, honestly, what am I like? I've got this light here, haven't I? Um, this has been a real godsend. I'm so glad they like, asked me to um, have a look at it. Can you see it? Anyway, I made this vice when I was 20 in the workshop, engineering workshop. There you go. I am an engineer. Um, and it came in really useful because I needed to straighten a piece. I'm going to see if I can see it on the floor. And I should use a mic because I listened back to the video last week and I don't know if the sound was okay. Just somebody put a thumbs up and let me know if the sound's okay. Are you in morning? Good morning, Abby. Upstate New York. Love your videos on machine maintenance and repair. Would love to learn. Well, I'm hoping that's what you're doing. I hope all these videos are teaching you and empowering you to be more self-sufficient. Um, usually watch on the telly, but I can't let you know I'm watching on that. So here I am on my laptop. Uh, thumbs up. So you can hear me, okay? Thank you, Lorenzo. Okay, so, um, yes. So I've managed to fix it. I haven't tried it out because I need to leave it for two hours. And um, what time did I fix it? I fixed it around half one, half two, half three. So it's been a couple of hours. So I needed to use, oh, that screen's frozen. Oh, I think we're gonna have technical problems. We're gonna have to do some clever things. So I've used this super steel epoxy weld, it's called. And Pete, um, hubby, uses that on, on the car he's never going to fix. He says he's going to fix it. He's not, he's not fixing this car. Um, but he uses it on that, so I was asked to borrow it. Um, and we've used it, actually, I say we, because I get him to do all the messy things, um, on machines. So older vintage machines where you can't get parts anymore. And occasionally we've had machines that... Um, something's just cracked and the parts something like a hundred and something pounds and I would just say can we not just glue it together but if you use this glue and if it can hold uh, the chassis of a car together you know a sewing machine's nothing is it in in power wise uh, it can hold that together so um we use it and I've used it on machines that I have and it's as strong as steel like it says 
so it's super steel so that's um lasted for years years and years because you use the tiniest amount and i'll show you how much i use i made that much um from the two tubes you just mix it up and um i use the pin to just grab enough um, to put in the slot so I pulled out the old pin I can't find it I don't know where it's gone um, and I chopped 14 millimeters off this pin <laughs> this is a hack for you uh, chopped 14 millimeters slotted it into that little channel that's there and I glued it down with that super steel and that super steel won't be very pricey will it um, I don't know where I'm looking that super steel won't be very pricey and um, hopefully it's done a fix. So really what I could do live on air is put the machine back together again and um, uh, put the machine back together again and see if it works live on air. <laughs> um, Shaz, where's that? Um, during lockdown, thanks to you, I know how to sew. Got myself a machine, made the PJ bottoms along with you. Oh, brilliant. Uh, and you're 56 only learning how to sew from Belfast. Do you know what? That's amazing, Shaz. I'm so proud of you. That's brilliant. I just want you all to be so confident with everything related to sewing. Um, and I always think, I say this to my kids, I just think it's hysterical that I teach you guys how to sew because I'm self-taught. <laughs> um, it's all self-taught stuff and I just sort of throw things together throw it all together and hope for the best it's like I should make a video where I throw the fabric in the end suddenly it's a pair of pants or a pair of whatever because there's no method no uh, rhythm or rhyme or whatever the phrase is to what I do it's just sort of happens so um and again with the machine fixing it's not something you learn to do uh, no one teaches that no one trains you up um, you can become an apprentice but it's a sought after job and i think people will say they stay in a job for 50 60 years and um, you can get books i did have a book out um but jasmine said it doesn't look right there so she put it away um so i haven't got it handy to show you but it's a really old book um i think it's just called machine repair uh, and it was written in the 80s and i just found it on ebay um but it is for vintage machines but like i said before machines are the same throughout at the end of the day it's just a very simple mechanic of a shaft at the top that you know a few bits and bobs that move the needle up and down and you've got the press of foot lever and then you've got a shaft at the bottom that connects the two that rotates the bobbin and really essentially all machines are like that even the overlocker they're all essentially just like that and it's just understanding what all the individual little cogs do but i'm teaching you all that you're all learning you're all good good students um what else so that's what i've been up to today um but in <laughs> in the week i've been shopping so earlier in the week i went to i don't know can any of you remember where i went were any of you paying attention I went to um, a, a fabric stroke sari shop um, up in Bradford, so it's about an hour and a half away from me because um, I drive slow. And um, I bought some saris, like that one, and it's velvet. And I'm not going to touch it because it took me ages to pin it on there. But um, I don't, I don't wear saris. It's not something I've ever really worn, although I will do at some point. Um, and I bought some sari fabric, I'll show you. Uh, it's brocade, it's similar to the red stuff that I made, that red jacket. Um, and you're self-taught as well, Sarah. It's good, it's good, just do it, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> um, I went to have a look at a college course and it was like £10,000 a year. I can't afford that, I haven't got that. Um, denim. So I bought some denim to make um, a pair of jeans for me, but I also bought another little one to make a waistcoat. Oh, uh, a waistcoat for um, one of my boys. And then, so I mean, I think I paid about eight pound fifty for that from Bombay stores. What else did I buy? I bought some. They have a real selection. I mean, it's, this isn't promo work for Bombay stores, 
um, they're just amazing shop. It's just, I felt, if you're listening from Bombay stores, I am sorry. <laughs> you're just very candid with, with what I say. Um, they, they, it just felt disorganised in there. But there's so much to see, and so it must be so hard for them to to display it all properly or well. But the fabrics are displayed well. It's just like any fabric shop; they never have the colour you want, <laughs> do they? You never find you, you can see all these silk dupions in lots and lots of different colours, but they never have the right colour for you. And the denim they had about ten or fifteen rolls of it, but not the right colour that I wanted. <laughs> anyway, so I thought I'd make, have a go at making one of these. I be, I bought this pattern about three years ago and I just thought I would make it. Um, you went fabric shopping near me and I've never caught, oh, tell me what, uh, who is that? Uh, Terry, Terry, I didn't know, I don't know where you all live. I don't know where you live. I'm sorry, but I have to go have a great weekend. Jen, have a lovely weekend. Sorry to see you go hope it's where wherever you're going to miss this um and um i bought another sari this one. Oh my gosh i absolutely love it i opened it up the other thing about fabric shopping i don't know what you guys are like people people do people do ask about fabric shopping and i've been asked a few times about the types of fabric again i'm self-taught so i don't really know I'm not an authorised person to say this is this and that's that. Um, although I have worked with fabric for years and years and years, forever, well, from sewing. Um, so I do know lots of different types. Um, so what I might do is go to a fabric shop and get the guys over there to go around with me and we can do maybe a show from there. That would be a good one, do you think? Should we do that? Should we do that? That would be a nice one. Anyway, so that's another one I bought. So that's another one. You all saw that on Instagram. That's still in its packet. And um, one I bought here as well. So I need to turn them into something. I'm going to leave them in the packets. Um, so uh, somebody said on Instagram, um, the, the solution there should be a solution to all the fabric shopping you're doing, and it's sewing. But that's not something I do. I've got two hobbies, fabric shopping and fixing machines, that's it. I don't sew the fabric, I just hoard it. Who else is like me? Who understands what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> what's that? Uh, yeah, I think we should do that. You know, go into a shop and get one of the professionals, the people who know. So I need to find a shop where... Um, the other thing about Bombay stores was... Um, Sorry if you're listening, Bombay stores. But there wasn't a lot of help available in the fabric section. Um, you know, prices weren't there. There was nothing um, to let you know what, what was what. Um, or there were no signs or anything. So it was just a very difficult place to shop in. I ended up spending a lot of time there. And I felt most of it was wasted just looking for... What, what it was I wanted. So then, um, as if that wasn't enough, all that fabric I bought, I went to the market, my favourite hangout, it really is. Um, it's not far from where I dropped my sons off at school. So <laughs> I pop in and I've got five yards of this. Look at this. I keep losing this camera. That's my son, by the way. He decided it was funny to put his uh, um, face on my phone. I think I can do this. I don't know what I've done for it to, but look at this. This is top notch, really nice quality business suiting, business suiting, suiting fabric. Really nice piece. It's not wool, but it is good stuff. Let me, <laughs> you see my, the messy, messy space. Um, but isn't that nice? And it's a lovely colour. So I managed to get five metres of that. So I managed to get five metres of that and I'm going to turn it into a waistcoat jacket and trousers at some point in my life. <laughs> I'm supposed to do it this week. Um, did you do that? No, I haven't done the daylight giveaway. Let me do that. And it is too nice to cut up this fabric. Shall we do the daylight giveaway? Let me find that notepad. Because 
I wrote it down because I wrote if I write it down, it gets done. Should we do the giveaway? Are you planning on making a suit? Yes, I'm gonna make a suit. So wait to go. It's not for me, it's for my son. He's six form now. And they wear suits at six form. Very posh school. In our school, we just wore jeans and t-shirt. I don't think it was even that posh. Right, um, Um, I hate this part because these are the three winners. Right, so this person said, um, my eyes aren't great and she's bought new glasses and her sewing area casts a shadow and I just, my heart just went, oh my gosh, that is so me. Need glasses, hopeless with my glasses and I've got constant shadows because of where we live. And then she said a lamp would be a godsend, sun, uh, would be a sunshine godsend. And I thought that is so cute. So the first person to take one of the lamps is Annie Susie. I need to put my glasses on. So Annie Susie, are, are you in the house? I don't know. Annie Susie, are you here? So that's the first person. You're all going to hate me because I hate doing these things. <laughs> but I didn't pick these. These were picked earlier. So, um, but I thought, what a lovely thing to uh, to say. Um, should we do the second one? Because uh, it's already twenty. Where does the time go? The next person shares a room with a sister, and that um, that was a lovely one. Again, I didn't pick these. I promise, I didn't pick these. Um, but I thought, oh wow, that's so me. I have to share a room and she and the lights have to go off at 9 p.m. and would love to use um, would be would love to carry on working. Well, that wasn't me. <laughs> I was the person who switched the light off at night so I'm going to sleep now. That's it for me. And that was B I K 8 exclamation mark. I don't know who that is. So if you're in the house, is it Bic 8? I'm going to just say Bic 8. And um, the other person I know is here today said, I really need a lamp to clean um, an overlocker and thread it because I don't have a lamp for the machines. I think they would um, be a highlight. I think that's what he said. And that's Lorenzo Souza. So Lorenzo, <laughs> I know you're here somewhere. Um, say hello. So Annie Susie, Bic 8 and Lorenzo Souza. But don't despair if you didn't win today because I've got um, another giveaway coming up. The Father's Day is coming up. Um, oh, congratulations to you guys. You guys need to get in touch. I will message you as well. Lorenzo. Um, so I've, I've got another giveaway coming up uh, for Father's Day, in time for Father's Day. Um, and I chose Father's Day because, um, because the, uh, you might have seen on um, my Instagram, it's hard to see people um, uh, reactions and things. Um, Hemline asked me, this is really nice. I don't know what I've done, uh, but this is really sweet that, um, you know, companies have asked me to look at things um, because, again, it's one of those, I don't know what I've done, that you think I should do this. But maybe it's because I'm a busybody and they go, oh, gosh, well, she's on this, let's ask her. <laughs> so um, they do this uh, recycled packaging hemline. This, so this is the new range from hemline. It's called Hemline Gold. And um, I'm going to get rid of that corner screen because that corner screen isn't actually doing anything for anybody. Let's have a look. I could do that. Um, it, it's really cool. It's really very classy, very chic, and I think it's non-gender. Uh, is it? Binary? What do we call it? What's the word, guys? Um, oh, cargo pants. I need to make them. Um, Anyway, Hemline uh, sent me a bunch of stuff and I put them on Instagram and I used them and I haven't made a review video or anything like that because I wasn't 100% convinced because 
The packaging is great, so the ethos behind the packaging, it's all recycled, we love it, they're thinking about the impact on the environment and all of that. Um, and then when we opened the packaging, I wasn't sold on the product inside, so I said to them, should we just leave it for a minute? <laughs> I'm so honest, I'm brutally honest and um, so I didn't want to promote it because at the end of the day I'm really here for me representing you guys because you guys are just like me. You're so is like me, you do not want to waste your money, you do not want to go out and buy a needle plate for £36 uh, because let's be honest the machine, you know, uh, only costs £120. Why am I going to spend £36 on a needle plate? That's going to be infuriating. So, um, the, the idea is we don't want to be putting things on landfill. And if something inside the box that I've just paid lots of money for is rubbish, I'm going to be frustrated. And that's what sort of propelled me into doing this. So I said to them, I'm really sorry, I love I love the concept, I love where you're going with it, I love the fact that you're looking at a recycled packaging and you're being eco-friendly with all that, but pff, what's inside the box? Come on, <laughs> pull up your socks. I am, I'm rude. Um, but they did this, this was really such a cool idea and I absolutely love it. This is the multi quilters mat and I am, I am going to promote this because I love it. Um, and that's because, um, you know, all these charity days I do, these sew-alongs that you can come to and sew, um, like dresses for girl, little girls around the world and shorts and we make um, all sorts of things for people. Um, we've made sanitary towels for uh, food banks, we've made bags for food banks, we've made... Um, what else have we made? We've made things. We've made things. And I want to continue doing that after lockdown, but at the moment I can't. So um, when you, you're you on your travels to a sewing class, you get this multi-mat. Um, what's it called? Quilters multi-mat. So it's for a quilter. So what happens is you have um, a padded case, sort of a padded book, and it's got a cutting mat on the inside. And aren't the colours just beautiful? Isn't it just elegant and very chic and then you get this sort of a suede feel panel with a sort of um, grippy not grippy but this has got the sandpapery emery board type feel to it so what you can do is when you're quilting you can put your pieces on there I mean I, I, I started making a mask I altered the dress for somebody and I said with the remainder of fabric why don't I she's only tiny so I chopped off a big chunk off the dress uh, so it's not draping on the floor. And I said, why don't I make a matching mask? And this was about two months ago. I've still not got round to it. But it stays there and you can close it all up and travel with it. And it stays neatly. And when you open it up and go to class, all the pieces are still there. How clever is that? How wonderful is that? That's really cool. I like that. But there are a couple of things with it as well. You can, um, you know, it's an ironing mat on the outside because of the sponginess you can iron on there so it's really really neat I like that so I asked them to give me some to give away they haven't got any they only had a few made um, <laughs> so they're going to send me some goodies and I said we're going to do it for Father's Day so they they, they said they will um, Helen ah uh, oh, that's really sweet and you bought a daylight lamp and it's not set up yet ooh Lorenzo's uh, happy. Um, what do you have, Julie? One of these next to your machine so you can press seams as you do them. It's really good. It's, it is, it's a nice, I mean, I've got a tea tray um, that I, I sort of get out, a tea tray table. Um, it's a bit messy, I can show you. You have to see my son's face again. No, you don't. Um, I need to change the settings. I need to be more organised when I do these things. Let me show you. And these are some fabrics I bought when I went to Ikea. Because I thought, oh, do you remember I talked about it? So that was last week. The cargo shorts aren't made yet. I am making them. And that was the top that I was going to make for Jasmine. So I keep this. So this is this is one of the ironing mats I've made. And it's um, got pockets. Really useful pockets. I don't put things in those pockets. Um, 
I don't know why, I just tend to make them. And it's um, really handy with all the little irons. You can see the messy corner over there where I've neatly put away all my irons. Can you see them right in the corner there? <laughs> I've got a couple of irons sitting there. And they're really useful. So we'll go back to the machines. You can leave them on the machines. Um, so, so a thing like that is really handy. So uh, we've got to do some giveaways, haven't we? So for Father's Day, I thought it was quite chic, isn't it? So um, yeah, so don't despair if you didn't win one of the lamps. BG888 is here. Hello. Um, one of the lamps. If you didn't win one of the lamps, we've got other giveaways coming up. You know me. We like to give things away. I like to uh, put the guilt trip on these companies and say, come on, be nice. Play fair. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I've got a couple of videos coming up. I've got the cargo pants coming up, I promise. I, you found the steel epoxy to mend a garden chair and for a machine repair book. I love to add stuff to that. With, oh, Carol, do you know, sometimes my kids call me One Click Abby. <laughs> I picked up that name. It's not good. Stop doing it. It's not a good thing to do. But that steel, that super steel epoxy is amazing. It really is. I've used it to fix all sorts of um, all sorts of things. It really does fix. If it can fix a car, it can, and it lasts forever. And I think that's quite quite sturdily in. The thing is, I used a pin. Now the pin I used isn't very strong. What I really wanted were, was a pin like that. You know those really thick ones. And that would have been useful, but I actually threw all mine away. And I did that a couple of hours ago, so that's, yeah, um, hard as nails. Hard as nails. How are we doing for time, people? Are we bored? Do we move on? Shall I repeat the winners, if in case they've come back? Lorenzo, you know you've won. Um, we've got Bic8 and Annie Susie, if you've sort of appeared somewhere in there. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, that, so that's me, so I've got a couple of videos coming up, I've got the cargo shorts, I don't know if you guys want to watch me making a suit, um, or a waistcoat, I did a waistcoat last year, so, um, I don't know if that's worth doing, but I want to make a few tops and things, um, a needle, yes, I did think about a needle, Julie, for that, um, but I don't know why I didn't go for a needle. I don't think it matters. You can, as long as it's um, thick enough uh, to go in that space, I think it would be fine. I'm going to put it back in. And I'm not in a rush to go off anywhere, so you can sort of join me to do this. Um, what, else, um, what else have I been up to? Oh, I'll tell you what. Uh, so today I went onto Facebook. And I like to look out for machines and I put this and um, somebody was uh, getting rid of spares and repairs. So again, another reason um, you know to help you lot learn how to sew uh, repair machines is um, this chap he had a couple of these machines um, that he picked up and um, on a pallet and he has no real knowledge on sewing machines. He um, some shorts yes that's what we're doing Lorenzo that's exactly what we're doing soon Um, this machine uh, two of them now you can see that they are the Janome's Um, it, it is the if you've got the 2200XT machine it's exactly that model but the DM stands for Dunelm, Dunelm Mill so it's actually Dunelm's uh, they don't use the word mill in their name anymore so the, the it's a shop in the UK for you you guys who aren't in the UK it's it's a sort of a household shop um a bit like um is it Hobby Lobby not Hobby Lobby the other one that everyone goes to up there in the states but it, it has everything home furnishing and then you've got um fabrics and sewing machines there so, uh, so they have their uh, it's a Janome machine and it's a Dunnell mill um x300 deluxe i don't know what the deluxe stands for but basically it's the carbon copy of the xt2200 and um if i open the machine up 
it'll be a carbon copy of every other front loading machine. So what's happened is he sold it as spares and repairs it's because somebody's dropped it and you can see it's separated up there and um, what happens is when the machines open um, when the bobbin's in this isn't turning uh, the hand wheel doesn't turn so when you go out and buy a second hand machine you need to check all this people are a bit worried about um, shopping and not having the confidence to do that in my instagram picture i showed you when i go fabric shopping i literally pull the fabric out i want to see it flow i want to see it, uh, how it falls and you should do that the more people who do that the more comfortable fabric shops will be at the moment uh, i see people they just point to the fabric on the row and they'll have some of that and i think i might as well buy that fabric online you want to see how it falls, how it drapes, um, and feel comfortable doing that. You should do that. I mean, literally, I got <laughs> I took a pattern with me and um, started putting it on, placing it onto the fabric. And I said, if I place these pattern pieces on the fabric, am I going to have enough? Because it was a sari, so they only have, um, I don't know what the English word is, but it's like the drapey part, but it's called fallu in um, Indian language, whatever, um, but it's called Balu and that's actually the drapey part, so that's that part there, so this um, sari is actually mostly this net, so this is a net with a gold trim at the bottom and then there's a velvet piece here which then just goes around the body once and drapes over the shoulder and um, so on the one I was showing in the Instagram video it's just a small piece so I just wanted to make sure there was enough because I want to make the empire dress waistline and uh, um, um, yeah what you know what I mean um very Jane Austen very 1918 isn't it Bridgerton and Pride and Prejudice it, they, they're set in 1918 that's right isn't it it's not 1818 I'm not 100 years old I waffle. This is when I know I'm not comfortable because I start waffling, talking rubbish. And um, anyway, going back to this machine. So again, when you do buy a second-hand machine, don't be frightened to just look at it and have a real uh, play because you don't want to buy a broken machine. Um, he was quite honest. I've bought machines, and they, you can, you know, I'm comfortable buying a second-hand machine. Um, but if it's as obvious as that, then you know it's been dropped or somebody's taken it apart and they've had a play with it. I mean, I've had machines um, in for a service and they've said, oh, something's happened to the tension. I've not done anything. I don't know, so I'll leave it with you. But it's quite clearly been opened and they've attempted. And I, it's, you know, and I could embarrass them, but it's not. I'm quite proud of people having a go at their machines and then coming to me and, say oh it's not working i would be so proud of you if you came to me and said can you help me with this machine i've had a go um i think it's great i think it's wonderful that people try anyway so i've taken these out and it's still not working so it's nothing down there that's jammed and um, i only picked them up this morning uh, it's got to be up here so i thought i would make a video to show you um me picking up a second hand machine um, and making sure it's back to working again we can do that genome machines on the whole are really good machines i doubt very much there's anything in there that can't be fixed um yeah we can I, i've not come across there's not been many machines i've not been able to fix i think the only problems i ever stumble across are electrical issues and that's because i'm not comfortable giving somebody a machine not being certified myself but otherwise if it was mine and I had an electric problem with it I'd probably fix it um but with you know you don't want somebody else's house burning down if it was my house burning down I'd say well I should pay more attention do we have a look at what you're all saying um let's see what you're all saying I didn't get rid of this carpet should have done <laughs> Can you make a video doing the summer shorts? Yes, that, that's what I want to do. I want to make cargo shorts or utility shorts. 
I went on uh, that website, didn't I? And they're about a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds for a pair of tra uh, shorts. I just think just crazy. Um, more money than cents sometimes people have. Um, but you know, why not if you've got the money? Love done it. The haberdashery is pretty good, although for buying machines, if I can test drive a machine first, I agree. Yeah, you should always. Be, I think for me. Having a sewing machine, you've, it's got to feel like an extension of you. You've got to be, it sounds very crafty kid, but you must be at one with the machine. You and the machine must feel like you work in tune together. And um, and if it doesn't, um, if it doesn't work, then you move on and look at another one. I. I, I mean, I've got that computer machine in the back. I've got that Juki still sitting there, and it's not moved from that spot because I, I, I just don't feel at one with computer machines. Lots of people do. Nothing wrong with though. I just don't feel like we're all um, there. Shaz, you will get the confidence. You just need to play. Just keep, you know, practice. I think like overlockers. A lot of people a few years ago didn't feel comfortable with overlockers about threading them. People were still pulling through, which is a very bad um, um, technique. I don't like the pulling through method. I think that's a, sorry, <laughs> but I just don't like it. I think it's better for you to just snip all the threads, clean the machine and re-thread. It's easier. Who's not feeling well? Oh, Sarah, I hope you feel better soon, whatever it is. Uh, Lorenzo, your SO10L and Tradition are very happy. They're really good machines. If you use, um, oh, Yoda. <laughs> Yoda speaks a bit funny though. Um, I can't even attempt it. I was going to attempt something. Um, so yeah, so that's what I think I've got planned coming up. So a video on my uh, marketplace purchase of that, my marketplace fabric making it into, well it's my Ikea fabric turning them into some shorts for boys, men rather. Um, I've measured hubby, well he's been on a diet since just between you and me. I'm not supposed to really tell the world but he didn't like the numbers. <laughs> um, and what was the other thing I said? So we've got that, that. And a giveaway, we'll do a giveaway. And I think that's it, isn't it, for now? I've got to turn that sari into something. I was hoping to do it this morning, but I got caught up with that sewing machine instead and going shopping. Got to stop shopping. Right, how, how is everybody? We are all right? I think that's, I'm gonna call it a day now because I said to myself, do you know what, I'm only gonna go on for 10 minutes. I might be back next week, not sure. Um, we just have to see. See how my Saturdays are, how they're going. But um, Annie, if you're there, Annie, Susie, Vic, Eight, and Lorenzo, you need to get in touch or um, whatever. We'll get in touch, speak, and I'll get your details. And we will get the wonderful daylight lamps here. And we will at some point have some more. I'm sure we will. They're so kind. Rather, I'm really a bully and I keep messing about. Take care, everybody. Everybody's good and you are all um, amazing. Thank you for joining me today. Um, had another fall today. Oh, Julie, don't fall down. It's not good for you. <laughs> you look after yourself. Um, take care, everybody. Wish you all well.